Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Islamist Hamas organization insists that the region, referring to the Middle East, will not enjoy calm as long as the enemy, referring to Israel, is on Palestinian land and Gaza is besieged. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu claims that the latest domestic developments, in which Israel is set to hold snap elections once again in September, will not hinder Washington's efforts to realize its Middle East strategy. Washington has reportedly issued a stern warning to the leadership in Beirut, urging it to take immediate action against Hezbollah's precision-guided missile factories, or else Jerusalem will take the matter into its own hands. The Islamist Hamas organization insists that the region, referring to the Middle East, will not enjoy calm as long as the enemy, referring to Israel, is on Palestinian land and Gaza is besieged. Hamas Deputy Chief Khalil al-Haya made this comment in an interview with the U.S.-based Wall Street Journal, which revealed, citing Israeli and Palestinian sources, that Hamas and its Iranian-backed ally, the Islamic Jihad, have managed to replenish their munition stock of roughly 10,000 rockets by combined means of smuggling and local manufacturing. The report was confirmed to TV7 by both Israeli officials and Hamas sources, affirming that in spite of the jointly imposed Israeli-Egyptian blockade on the Gaza Strip, Hamas managed to replenish its arsenal of rockets and mortar shells to the amount it attained before the 2014 Gaza War. It is important to mention that Hamas has never shied away from its aspiration to annihilate the Jewish state and openly declares its intention in the organization's charter, which states in its introduction that Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. Its charter further vows to pursue jihad, a holy Muslim war against all non-Muslims in general and Jews in particular. That is why in efforts to preserve broad international support for the Palestinian cause, the Palestinian Authority under its Western-backed chairman, Mahmoud Abbas, together with other pro-Palestinian organizations, have sought to diminish the perceived support which Hamas receives from the Palestinian public. It is important to remember, however, that Hamas achieved an overwhelming victory in the last national legislative elections for the Palestinian Authority, which was held in January of 2006. Back then, Hamas won across the West Bank and Gaza Strip 74 seats out of the 132-member Palestinian Legislative Council, compared to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah faction, which sustained a devastating defeat, securing only 45 seats. Nevertheless, after Hamas rejected international demands to abandon its declared aspiration to annihilate the Jewish state, many countries among the international community, including the United States, European Union and Israel itself, rejected the popular Palestinian vote. Instead, they maintained de facto relations with the losing Fatah faction and its leader, Mahmoud Abbas. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump's Middle East envoy Jason Greenblatt responded to the Wall Street Journal's report on his Twitter account, accusing both the Islamist Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad of continuing to bring misery and suffering to Palestinians in Gaza. Greenblatt's statement came just several days after he visited Israel together with senior White House advisor Jared Kushner as part of Washington's latest efforts to unveil its so-called deal of the century to resolve the decades-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict. During their meeting with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu in Jerusalem, the Israeli leader underscored the strong relations between the United States and the Jewish state, while claiming that the latest domestic development, in which Israel is set to hold snap elections once again in September, will not hinder Washington's efforts to realize its Middle East strategy. It's always a, a great pleasure to uh, welcome uh, Jared Kushner, and Jason Greenblatt uh, to uh, Israel, to Jerusalem, and to discuss our common efforts for prosperity, security, and peace. I have to say that I'm tremendously encouraged by everything that I hear about how uh, the United States, under President Trump, is working to uh, bring allies together in this region against uh, common uh, challenges, but also to seize common opportunities. And uh, even though we had a little event last night. Uh, that's not going to stop us. We're going to continue working together. Uh, and we had a great productive meeting which reaffirms that the 
alliance between the United States and America has never been stronger, and it's going to get even stronger. Thank you. Prime Minister Netanyahu's optimism about the American ability to advance its regional initiative in spite of Israel's unprecedented return to national parliamentary elections did not convince U.S. President Donald Trump, who voiced his frustration prior to departing for Europe over the weekend. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, look, we're doing our best to help the Middle East to get a peace plan, and he may be right. I mean, most people would say that. I think we have a good chance, but we'll see what happens. In the meantime, Israel's is all messed up with their election. I mean, that came out of the blue three days ago, so that's all messed up. They ought to get their act together. I mean, Bibi got elected. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to have to go through the process again till September. That's ridiculous. So we're not happy about that. But if we can get a Mideast peace plan, that would be good. While the snap Israeli elections have frustrated President Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu, Palestinian leaders in the West Bank city of Ramallah voiced their satisfaction that while the economic stage of the American initiative will proceed as planned, the political circumstances in both Jerusalem and Washington will force a delay to unveil its political segment. Meanwhile, President Trump's senior advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, rejected Palestinian criticism against the Trump administration, underscoring that America's aid is not an entitlement. In an interview that was aired on Sunday on HBO's Axios, Kushner insisted that there is a difference between the Palestinian leadership and the Palestinian people. You've cut all aid to the Palestinians, including hospitals in East Jerusalem, and you've shut down the Palestinian diplomatic office in Washington. I mean, can you not see why they might not want to talk to you and that they might not trust you? Right, so there's a difference between the Palestinian leadership and the Palestinian people. Okay. And you I, think the Palestinian people would be okay with all of those things that you guys have done? The actions we've taken were because America's aid is not an entitlement, right? If we make certain decisions which we're allowed to as a sovereign nation to respect the rights of another sovereign nation, and we get criticized by that government, the response of this president is not to say, oh, let me give you more aid. So, uh, again, that was as a result of decisions taken by the Palestinian leadership. With regards to the Palestinian people, uh, I do believe that they want to have a better life, and I do think that uh, they're not going to judge. They don't mind the aid being cut. Well, they're not going to judge anything based on trusting me or trusting anyone else. They're going to judge it based on uh, the facts and then make a determination. Do they think this will allow them to have a pathway to a better life or not? Now to Israel's northern neighbor, Lebanon, where Washington has reportedly issued a stern warning to the leadership in Beirut, urging it to take immediate action regarding Hezbollah's precision-guided missile factories, or else Jerusalem will take the matter into its own hands. According to the Saudi-owned Al-Khayat newspaper, a delegation led by U.S. Acting Assistant Secretary for Near Eastern Affairs David Satterfield confronted Lebanese President Michel Aoun and Prime Minister Saad al-Khariri on the growing prospects of war unless Hezbollah is dealt with. Satterfield reportedly provided evidence to Lebanon's leadership of Hezbollah's precision missiles manufacturing plants, including maps, images and other irrefutable evidence. According to the report, Satterfield told Lebanon's leaders that the Trump administration cannot disregard the documented presence of the missile sites and cannot restrain Israel from taking action against them. Meanwhile, Israeli defense officials have declined to comment on any imminent plans to strike the reported Iranian-funded missile factories in Lebanon, although the IDF has repeatedly launched strikes against storehouses and convoys, transporting arms from Iran through Iraq and Syria to its Hezbollah proxy in Lebanon. Thank you for watching us. I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank all of our supporters as your donations and prayers make our productions here in Jerusalem possible. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.